I'm going to personally do this. I'll the do Baltimore you... Orioles are being sold. <laughs> Let's fucking go. The Baltimore <laughs> Orioles have one of the worst ownership groups in all of sports. Because often when someone buys a team and they pass it to their kids, they fuck it up. That's exactly what has been happening here. And we are about to see a renaissance period of baseball in Baltimore, AJ. As you can see, they're making a pretty penny on this. $173 million in 1993 in bankruptcy hearings. And now they're selling it for a little over $1.7 billion to some finance bros that I guarantee you will care more than what is going on right now with John Angelos, who is just stuffing his pockets with cash and is about to do that even more so. But this isn't just a win for Baltimore because they're actually going to invest in their team. This is also a win for baseball because this is somebody who is poisonous to our sport in terms of the words that come out of his mouth. There's 9,000 examples, even in the past year, of suspending a broadcaster for doing nothing, of promising the city certain things that never happen, threatening fans that you're going to raise ticket prices if you even think about extensions like for uh, Gunnar Henderson or Adley Rutschman, and the list goes on and on. Can you tell I'm excited? Uh, the only thing I'd Way would you would be more excited is if you got another team that was sold. I think that would be the only, the only way. Actually, maybe two teams. One is the jersey Brock's wearing, and one is a green and gold team that uh, you know, that we've talked about numerous times about their owner and how he hasn't exactly helped the team out. But this is a banner day for Baltimore. It's great for the Orioles. Cal Ripken's being brought back in, and the thing for me is now they'll spend some money. They haven't spent any money this offseason. You got Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman. You know, Jackson Holiday, all these guys that are, should be locked up like other teams, like you see the Braves doing, they haven't locked up any of them. So it's time now. These new guys, you know, David Rubenstein, when he comes in to take over, you know what? His first order of business should be like, all right, Adley, let's get a deal done for you. Gunner, let's get a deal done for you. Maybe Kyle, maybe Bradish. I mean, whoever he thinks they need to lock up, like, let's get this done so the fans can go and say, all right, we got these guys for the next five, six, seven years. And they play in a great ballpark. It's older, but it's still a great place. There's some renovations needed. I'm sure they'll get those done. But listen, anytime you get rid of out, out with some of the old guard stuff and bring in some of the new guys, because let's be honest, John Angelos, like you said, he didn't care that much. He was making money, money, money. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to move the Orioles. You're not moving the Orioles. They signed a new lease, and then miraculously a deal got done to sell them. So this is, this is all about a money grab for the Angelos family. And you know what? They made a what 1.6 billion off this deal, so more power to you. Now let's get the Orioles spending. Because guess what, Brock Star? Your Red Sox, your Yankees, they're not going to be the top of the heap anymore if these guys come in and do what they're supposed to do. Listen, you're you're spot on, AJ. Like <clears throat> that ballpark to me is is that was one of my favorite places to go. Um, and you, you think back to the years, I mean, obviously they were good last year, one of the vision, but you think about the years with JJ Hardy and, and, and Matt Wieters and, and whenever they were in the playoffs and that place was packed, right? Like that, that place is awesome. And, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, in my opinion, right off in the sunset with this money that you made on your team and now you don't have to care, you know, you don't, you don't have to care. You're rich. Um, just be happy that, that you don't have to deal with it anymore. But it is, it's a huge move for the, for the city of Baltimore, for the Orioles. And I mean, it's exciting for, I'm not even an Orioles fan. And it, 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 it's exciting for me to see a, a, a team, an organization get some new ownership in there who's willing to do something and make the team better and, and spend money on players. And I mean, that's, that's all you want as a fan, uh, of a franchise of an organization, just like, give me something, right? Like, give me something to root for. And, you know, I think the the Baltimore Orioles are, are heading in the right direction and they're going to be a fun team to watch for a long, long time. Dude, their payroll is like $70 million. If you go back to 2018, which is when I think John Angelos was like, listen, we got to be as much like the Rays as possible and even kind of dumb it down a little bit and spend even less than them. What can we do? Mike Elias, who's the GM there, has done a fantastic job, a brilliant job during the rebuild. Let's keep in mind, there was close to six years of pain in Baltimore. You lose a generation of fans when you're that bad and you don't care like that. But they did build themselves back up. This is the time for them to strike. It's a very difficult division. They have not ranked higher than 27th in payroll since that time period I'm talking about, 2018. They also haven't even signed a player to a multi-year contract, a free agent. So everything's about to change. And also, you know, the Masson situation with the TV that they have going on between the Nationals and the Orioles. There's been ongoing legal, legal batting, battles. 
AJ, you know who's in charge of Masson, right? The president of Masson who makes millions and millions of dollars. I'm assuming it's John Angelos. It's John Angelos. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> gone. Bye. Is See he you later. Sure? Everything's about sure? to change. Yeah, because so Masson's finally, in the deal. So this will finally get rid of like the territorial rights with the nationals and that whole thing? Or are they going? I don't know all that. I just know that there won't be a train wreck running the ship who's – who's paying himself a lot, right? And then crying poor. I mean, he's paying himself like, I don't know, a, a tenth of what the freaking payroll is for the team just for that particular job, which obviously he does damage to. He doesn't contribute to that job. So just think about how many quick, changes quick, are about to occur. It's going to be a domino effect. Quick question for you, Scott, because Kelsey in the chat said that uh, the owners of the Orioles only own 40% of the team until Peter Angelos passes away. And Correct. then they take control. So... Does that mean John, like the Angelos family, still owns? They obviously still own sixty percent of the team. Does that mean they're still the controlling force behind this? Or I don't think so because they own seventy percent of the team. So if this new group takes over forty percent of the team, that takes away forty from them and puts them down to thirty. Right. So you'd have forty. That means they're the majority. Thirty to the Angelos family, and then the rest of the minority investors. I think we'll get clarification okay. because. Sorry, say that again in my ear. He's the control person right from the jump, right? Not even okay. Got it. Yeah. So when so is this? When is this going to be uh, approved? Do you know what's happening next week in Orlando? Mm, you're leaving. Ownership meetings. The owners' really? meetings. Yeah. Oh. Should we do a show from there? I mean, do you think sure. they would let us? Man, yeah. should we mic up the meeting? I feel like they'd be cool with that. Mic up the meeting. Mm. But no, in all seriousness, I mean, they're probably going to have a meeting about that. I'm, I would guarantee that that's one of the discussion points. And that's why this news comes out right now, because they only have those meetings, I believe, every quarter. And so they'll bring it up and be like, does anyone have any objection to John Angelos leaving our sport? And I think everyone will be like, oh, my God, <laughs> we're all about to make so much more money for this sport to get rid of one of the key villains of the sport. I mean, he was holding back Baltimore quite a bit. And yes, AJ, you're right. As far as Peter Angelos is concerned, unfortunately, um, he has been uh, incapacitated for the last several years and um, not sure how much longer he has to live. But it is a capital gains tax issue where they'll be able to you know, cash out much better as a family, um, if they wait at least for the partial amount of that sale. But the, the really the last wish for Peter, from what I read, was that he wanted to make sure that they secured the Orioles in Baltimore for years to come. So I will give credit on that front. However it got done, it got done, right? The Angelos family made a deal with the city. It's going to be there at least for 15 years. It has potential for 30. So that was the kind of dying wish there from Peter. And I give him credit because also I mean, AJ, you can remember from 93 to 2000, the Orioles were legit. They were spending at the top of the market. They were fun to follow. I remember even for me, I mean, I wasn't an Orioles fan growing up, but I was like, oh, this is a fun team to follow. That was in my childhood. Things started to change in the early 2000s. They became more mid-market. Now it's a train wreck in terms of how they're running the franchise. Obviously, it's a very successful team at the moment. Yeah, that doesn't. I mean, they went through some, they went through back through some ups and like when Adam Jones and, and Weeders, the, the group that Brock kind of talked about, Chris Davis, remember when they gave him the big contract and uh, they had Arietta and some of the other guys, it was, it was, listen, it was always a fun place to go as a player. Baltimore was always a fun stadium to go in and play. They, they always drew decent crowds, no matter how good or bad they were. So it wasn't, it's not like this place is awful. It's a great ballpark. They, they again, they need to do some renovations in the clubhouse and just, and just to clean up some stuff. But they're back, and now with new ownership, who hopefully is willing to spend, they're going to really be back. And it's a listen. This is a warning shot against the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Blue Jays. Guess what, boys? If the Orioles start spending money, they could run this division for a while. Well, yeah, right on. Uh, the <clears throat> the thing I like most about the Orioles right now is how young they are. Um, AJ, I, you know this. Like, you have to have young guys come up and turn into good big league players for your organization to take off. But if you're not spending in free agency and going out and filling holes, you're, you're, you're stuck. You're stuck in, in, in one spot. So with the Orioles, with their young talent that they have and, and the control that they have over these players, and I'm sure they're going to sign some of these guys to extensions because they're huge parts of their team. But if they can go out and start spending in free agency and getting some, some of the top end free agents, 
and bring them to, to Baltimore to plug in to fill some of these holes that they have. I mean, like you said, they they have a chance to be good, really good for a long time. And that's that's exciting for for anybody, you know, not not just Orioles fans, but baseball fans in general. And AJ, there were some fans on social that were like, well, these these are finance bros, you know, in private equity, they try and kind of milk companies out and trying to explain how business works. And I'm like, it's not going to happen. It's not. I'm sorry. I mean, the Dodgers have finance bros. The Mets have a finance bro running their team. This is going to be in that same realm. Are they going to be at the Dodgers Mets spending? No, but think about it. Look at the bar that is set. It's so freaking low. They're spending $70 million a year. We're talking about the Mets and Dodgers, 300 plus. I'm like, anybody that's concerned about this next ownership group is wrong. And I've already been doing some homework on them. Heard they're fantastic. So I don't think they're going to have any problems. It's going to be like their toy. And this is how you get back to the community. These are guys that have endless money. It's not going to be an issue. These are the kind of people you want in this sport. And also think about this. Think about if the Orioles is what their payroll is under seventy million. Yeah. Think if they got it to one hundred and seventy, which is kind of a little bit middle of the packish, a little high end, but they added a hundred million to this payroll. What they could bring in, I mean, that gets you a lot of free agents. A hundred million, right? So this could Even be half that, dude. Okay. Yeah, fifty Even million. Even half that, they would have had Snell, Hater, and another starter this off season. Like it was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Watch Think out. R- R- watch out, AL East. If they start spending, that's all I'm going to say. Watch out. You know, no, is there, Brock, is there a cooler moment in sports when Camden Yards is packed and they sing the national anthem and they just go, oh! oh dude, I'm telling you, oh. it's my favorite. Oh. It, it, it was my favorite place to go on the road. I loved I loved Baltimore. Obviously, you know, the hotel we stayed at was nice, but the, but the playing surface, the field, the fans, that ballpark, I mean – and you go back to, to like you said, the Chris Davis, the the Matt Weeders, like when they were in the postseason those few years and they were playing and that dude, that I mean, your TV screen shaking right whenever you're watching it. So I, I love that place. And I dude, I'm excited. I'm excited for them. I'm excited for the city. I'm excited for the fans. And I, I still don't like that they moved left field back. But, um, you know, maybe maybe these new guys will be like, you know, what? let's let's change it back and, 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 and put it back to way it's supposed to get supposed to be but that place is awesome that place is awesome and and uh, this is exciting time for for baltimore orioles fans hey brock i'll disagree with you on that i think mount baltimore has, has helped them it'll help with well, pitching recruiting and they're pinching but yeah but there's a study I, that says p- pitchers parks do better than hitters parks in terms of success over the years so they well tweaked that's fine that. that's fine that we can we can state all the facts we want i i still don't like it so <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. I like the i like the way it was and that's you know that's just maybe it's because i i hit well there i never hit an awful homer there and i couldn't do that but i just i, I felt like it i felt like it was a good place to go in as, as an opposing team and you're like all right we're going to baltimore we're going to score some runs here right but like like you said like if you need pitching yeah, great. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be good for them to bring guys in and but I mean I'm sure if you ask any of you know any of their offensive players, any of their hitters, they would prefer it to to go back yep. to the way it was. Hey, we used to go to Baltimore if you were like, Oh, we're for four games. If I don't get at least one homer in these four games, it's a bad series. Yeah. Because you're like, gosh, I gotta run into one fly ball that just keeps going and going and going, especially to right. It was like, Oh man, please, please, I gotta get out of here with at least one. So, homer. It was a it was a great it's a great place to hit. Great place to hit. And I mean, the, the playing surface was great. They take care of the field. I mean, it's the beautiful scenery background, like just a, just an awesome place. So, I, And I will agree with you on this from a fan perspective, from my perspective, right? Because I don't care. I mean, I agree. It's more entertaining to watch the way it was in the past. 